Hey everybody, welcome to this Tips and Tricks video. My name is Dave Hiddeman with Trimble, and this video is going to be taking a look at the contextual toolbar in Tecla Structures. Um, now there is an older video um, kind of explaining some of the basics and some of the features of the contextual toolbar that was uh, created a couple years ago by Lee Snyder. I'm going to provide a link uh, to that video below in the description because um, it is still all relevant information. Uh, but I wanted to make this video just to kind of encourage you to take a second look at this tool if you haven't already. I know I personally don't use it nearly enough uh, for some of the features and functions that it has to make things quicker and easier to do in Tecla structures. So if you're saying, well, Dave, I don't even know what the contextual toolbar is, that's this little guy you see floating right here. Um, the idea with the contextual toolbar is that it changes based on the context, based on what is currently selected in the model or drawings. Okay, so because I currently have the view selected, that's, you can see the gold border that I have here, the contextual uh, toolbar is currently displaying the uh, name of the view, the depth down and depth up. It's got in here uh, quick access to the, the view filters that I want to use, like if I wanted to come in here and say let's only see beams, um, or if I want to go back to standard. Um, it also has the uh, object representation options in here, and then we have some basic options for the display where you can you know turn on and off parts, or turn on and off bolts, or turn on and off welds. Now all of these things are accessible by double clicking in the background of the view, but the idea with the contextual toolbar is that it's a faster way to access most commonly used commands. Now you notice that mine seems to stay up here in the top left, and that's a personal setting. I have it pinned here so that no matter what I do, whether I'm grabbing a part or whether I'm grabbing a view or whether I'm grabbing a bolt or a weld, it's always in the same place. I like things to be you know, where I left them. Now the default, it's actually unpinned, where it's going to follow you around, and I, I personally don't like this very much, uh, sort of follows you around like a lost puppy, um, and I, I know it's supposed to be helpful that it's always right there where you need it, but sometimes I find it a little annoying to be popping up um, just because I moved my mouse, uh, you know, half an inch. So I personally take mine and I pin it up here to the upper left. You can do Either way, you know, everybody likes to work a little bit differently. Um, but again, I think this is a really powerful tool that not a lot of people are using, or at least not using to its full potential. So in here in the view options, you know, I already talked about a few things, but there's also view angles. If I wanted to come in here and very quickly flip to different perspectives of this 3D view, you can do that. Um, there are the uh, option to turn on and create uh, clip planes or delete all your clip planes and then something that's really important about the contextual toolbar across the board is its customizability is that a word <laughs> customization possibilities that's maybe a little bit better um, so in here you can see we've got name and depth and all those things are currently checked on well maybe I wanted to you know not see all of those things maybe I don't do a lot of stuff with clip planes so I can uncheck those options and you can see I get a little preview over here on the right about what kind of buttons I'm turning on and off and you know what it's going to look like before I actually apply these settings. Also, your contextual toolbar can uh, access and control things like macros and user-defined attributes. Now, in this case, I'm, I'm looking at view properties, so there's no UDAs associated with the view. But here are all these different macros that we can... Uh, basically trigger from inside the contextual toolbar. So once again, I don't have to go to my uh, applications and components and search for something and then activate it. So that's the, the view level, right? So just, to, uh, you know, I'm not going to go super deep into this. I, I encourage you to try this stuff out. Um, if I click on a part, so here I'm seeing part properties. So the name, and the depth down and depth up and the class and recently used profiles. Um, one of the things that Lee points out is this display detailing. And I think it's worth mentioning again. So this column has things like welds and it has things like cuts that I currently have turned off in my display. See, I'm already accessing this stuff a lot quicker. So I've got my welds currently turned off um, and, and cuts are currently hidden when they're inside of components. But a old school way to see that stuff would be to select this column or part, any object, delete and undo. And now I can see all of the cuts and welds uh, associated with this part. It works, it's a little inelegant maybe, but it works. The idea with that show detailing is that I can 
click that button and see the welds and cuts associated with that part. So, uh, you know, any sort of what we consider detailing is, you know, cuts and welds and bolts and holes and things like that. It just, it gives me a quick display of those. And as soon as I redraw the view, uh, they go away to whatever the current view settings are. Um, one of the things that he also showed in his earlier videos was the um, how he had added macros to his contextual toolbar to pull up drawings for this. Well, that's actually now included in the uh, default contextual toolbar. So you can open or create drawings. Now, I don't have a drawing for this column right now. Um, so if I wanted to, I could click this button to access the drawing if it were a thing. Or I can go ahead and create a fabrication drawing from this. So again, just sort of quick access to things I may want to do quickly. And if I pull up the customization options for a beam or a column, you can see we've got numbering series and material and finish and phase. Or uh, So, you know, lots of good stuff um, to be able to interact with this part very quickly. I'll show you one more on uh, objects here. If I zoom in and I'll grab a set of bolts, uh, let me actually change this. So I'm grabbing just the bolt group. The contextual toolbar, not a lot of stuff about bolts right now. You know, I'm seeing the spacing. Um, I'm seeing here the standard and the size. One thing that I would probably use a lot if I actually came in here and, and spent more time with this is the flip bolt direction. You know, sometimes able to flip that thing right around real quickly. If I were adding a macro to the beam uh, toolbar, I would probably add swap handles. You know, if I'm modeling in an angle or a channel, I need to pick it up and flip it over, I'd add the swap handles macro in here. So, you know, maybe I'll let's do that real quick. We'll come in here, we'll go down to the add macros and user defined attributes, and I'll scroll down till I can find the swap handles here. Let's see, swap handles and we'll add that. So now I've got swap handles added to the contextual toolbar. So, you know, let's go ahead and give this a quick, uh, a quick try. Let's model in a quick angle. And if I highlight that angle and go to my contextual toolbar, now I've got the swap handles button where I can just click on that and it's going to activate the macro to flip that thing over. So, you know, that's something I use all the time, and that's so much easier than having to go to the component uh, catalog, find that macro, and run it. Uh, I suppose you could also link a hotkey, but hey, you know, that's just a different way to accomplish the same thing. Now, one thing I do want to talk about on the modeling side, and I do want to show you this in drawings real quick, but on the modeling side, um, there are actually some components that have functionality within the contextual toolbar that you cannot access any other way. Okay, so let me give you uh, two examples that I've used. Um, the first example I'm going to show you is a, an extension for panels, uh, this framing panel. It's available on the warehouse. And uh, the, what this is going to do is allow me to create things like stud walls very, very quickly. I'll go ahead and pick two points in middle mouse click. Um, so this will uh, create stud walls and, and framing. I mean, actually, I didn't hit the middle mouse click there. Um, very, very quickly, as you can see here. If I have the uh, direct modification on, I can grab this, let me grab it as a component, and now I can push and pull if I want to change the height or if I want to change the length. Um, really powerful uh, sort of tool that we have on the warehouse. But getting back to the contextual toolbar, when I have direct modification on and I'm selecting this as a component, when you go up to the contextual toolbar, you'll see that there are some buttons here for additional functions, additional features that are not available in the dialog box. One of those that I use a lot is this add opening with two points. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Let's go in here and I'm going to open up a, uh, a grid line B view and let's zoom in here. And again, I have to have direct modification on. I have to be selecting this as a component because it is still a live component. So when I do that and I go to the contextual toolbar, I can access one of these. And there's a bunch of other tools in here for like modifying spacings and whatnot. But the add opening one, I can come in here and pick two points. And you can see how that quickly it's gone and created a window for me. It's split the studs. It's added new jams. That's something that, you know, like I said, is not in the dialog box for that tool. And then this is now a live opening. If I need to adjust something about the height of this opening or the width of these openings, um, the, the direct modification tool still works with this because it's still a live intelligent component. 
Another one um, that I use uh, that contextual toolbar on is going to be uh, floor panels. So let's go ahead and open up a different view here. Let's open up our uh, floor plan. And I'm just going to focus on one bay, you know, just to keep this simple for today. Uh, I'm going to search for a component called floor layout. I've made another video about this using floor layout, which was originally designed for a hollow core slab, but works really well for decking if you put a deck profile in there. Um, but what I'm going to do is use this to trace over a bay, like I'm going to trace around this bay, I'm going to middle mouse click to create that grouping of, uh, of deck. And you can see there, if I rotate this around, I'm getting some decking profiles in there, they're overlapping and they're covering that opening. Well, just like the panel tool, if I come in here and I've got my direct modification on, and I've got my select components on, and I grab that component, there are available functions in here that are not available anywhere else. Two of those I want to show you. One is to split the decking. So, you know, I've created this along a fairly large bay. If I wanted to split these at one of the beams, I could activate that function, come in here and pick two points along the beam where I want to split. And you could actually create more complex shapes than that, but I'm going to middle mouse click. And if I zoom in here real close and let's change my selection, you can see that I've now broken that into separate pieces of decking instead of one long continuous deck. Also in here, let's go ahead and change my selection back to selecting components, is the same sort of rectangular opening. There's also a circular opening in here. Um, so I can activate the rectangular opening and then I can rough in this opening that's here for, you know, a stair or an elevator shaft or something like that. And now this opening is an element that I can continue to modify using the push and pull functionalities, you know, the drag and drop stuff in the um, uh, direct modification function. So very, very powerful stuff. And again, I don't think enough people either know or are utilizing that. And, I, you know, I include myself in that. This is a tool that I don't nearly uh, use it to its full potential. Um, so maybe some really cool stuff that you guys can try out. Uh, so real quick, um, just to wrap this up, I do want to make the point that this is not just a model-based tool. The contextual toolbar also applies to drawings. It's also customizable in your drawings. So if I zoom in here and I grab something like a, uh, a piece mark, there's my contextual toolbar with properties for the piece mark, like font and text color and height, and then what type of leader line do I have? Um, and if I go over here to the edit properties, um, again, we can come in here and customize the properties and whether they're macros or user-defined uh, uh, attributes. Not that that really applies for a piece mark, but same sort of concept. You can also do it for objects. So if I wanted to change the appearance of an object, like the color, or if I wanted to change the uh, the appearance from like symbol to maybe a uh, partial profile, right? So now I've got a partial profile for that beam. Much faster than having to double click on that thing to open up the properties over here on the right to access more than I actually needed. So. Yeah, that contextual toolbar is some pretty powerful stuff. So like I said, go back and watch that original video. Lee talks about some more in detail stuff, turning it on and off. Um, this is supposed to be just kind of a high level, like, hey, go check it out, refresher. Uh, again, I'll include that in the description below. If you use the contextual toolbar, go ahead down in the in the comments and let me know what you use it for, maybe how you've customized it. Um, if you don't use it yet, you know, maybe let me know what you think it would be useful for. Um, and as always, I appreciate you watching this video. Give me some, some ideas for future tips and tricks videos, um, if there's something you want to learn more about. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.